Good evening. This open meeting of the Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's order of March 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth because of the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. We have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirements of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public, of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us. This meeting is convened by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and, and comment. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Supporting materials have been provided by members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. And the public's encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will in introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite members to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until you are recognized your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you're not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Due to the size of my laptop screen, uh, I may not be able to see all the members at once. So if someone has raised their hand and I've not noticed, I hereby request that either Tara Bradley or Annie LaCourt bring this to my attention. Finally, uh, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call. So allow me to uh, take the uh, roll call of attendees at this moment. Uh, Grant Gibeon. Here. Shane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. Micaiah Healy. Here. Brian Beck. Eric Padaria. Here. Sof Sophie Migliazzo. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Here. Shailene Crawford. Daryl Harmer. Here. Annie LaCourt. Here. Alan Jones. Here. George Koser. Here. Bill Keller. Here. Al Tosti. Here. Wanda Nascimento. Here. Christine Deschler. She's away. Dean Carmen. Here. And David McKenna. Here. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, first, first item um, on the agenda, um, I, I guess is my comments. I'd like to just make note that we will pick up the uh, re the uh, unfinished business with the capital budget tonight uh, after we do the minutes. Uh, and um, and I, I wanted to thank the folks that got together this week to follow up on that issue. Um, so do you have... Uh, to put up. I'm sorry, what was that? I said, do you have the minutes to put up on the screen? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes I do. Um, so I just have Monday 3 sevens, which was the Capital Planning Committee. Um, and I have just received the comment from Charlie that just confirming Chris Moore's title. Yeah, <clears throat> I think, yeah, I just, for clarity, uh, there are approximately four um, citizen members of the Capital Planning Committee and um, they are all appointed by the moderator. Oh, I see, I see, okay. So it's not exactly a title, it's just a 
acknowledging how he was appointed. So uh, are there any questions, changes, or comments on the minutes of 3-7? Which, by the way, thank you very much. Exhaustive minutes on the um, capital budget issues. Should, um, should the rest of the moderator appointee members be classified that way then? Um, I think I think you could just say citizen appointees. That's all. Okay. So, uh, as amended, a vote. Uh, are there any questions on the minutes? Motion is in order. So made. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on the minutes? Go to a vote. Grant Gibbion. Yes. Jane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Makaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Arif Padaria. I'll abstain. I was absent. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Shailene Crawford. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Annie Lacourt. Um, I will also abstain because I was absent. Alan Jones. Yes. George Coaster. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Uh, Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler is not here. Dean Carmen. Abstain. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. The minutes are approved as presented. Okay. Um, are the guests from the all right. Do we have any guests coming tonight from the Capital Budgeting Committee, Jonathan, or are we um, <clears throat> are we dealing directly with the issues? I don't believe we're having any guests uh, uh, coming. That we, and... okay. uh, yes, we, we're having um, Teamer and um, Sandy Pooler as well, um, and I think also Joe Connolly from the. Uh, Recreation Department to discuss the playground audit conversation. Well, then I stand corrected. Thank okay. you, Tara. <laughs> okay, so um, they're not here yet. Um, is Brian Beck here? Al Tati, who's going to do the parking budget tonight? Uh, it's really point. I guess Bill or I could do it, or we can do it together. Yeah, we'll do it together. Let me get the. Uh... Why don't we? Why don't we just handle that parking budget uh, and while we're waiting for the other folks to come on? Okay, sixty-six. I'm I'm pulling that up just a second here. How do you want to start? Uh, sure. If uh, we can take a look at the top. Um, Eric, can you make it a little bigger? Good. Perfect. Okay, salaries and wages are uh, pretty well set. No change. Um, in case people are curious, the amount spent, the actuals in 20 and 21, uh, was the, as you know, the meters were shut down uh, for a good chunk of that time. And so they had to replace the uh, parking and collection uh, inputter, for want of a better word. And so uh, uh, they, they just delayed that. Uh, and so that's why that money wasn't spent. They were asked to delay it and they delayed it. Um, the printing is primarily for tickets. Um, and now that the meters are open, of course, they have to go back to that. Uh, the contractual services is Verizon Communications. Um, 
is that's being used. The offsets are from the uh, parking benefit district, which helps pay for the collection and maintenance. And uh, the parking total is the 58,768, which is what we are recommending. Thank you. Uh, any questions on the parking budget? So, Al, uh, typically the finance committee re also reviews the, um, the parking district funding and revenue statements. Are they available also? Uh, no. I think Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Brian was going to be getting those uh, yeah. from the treasurer. He was. He's going to get those from uh, Phyllis and then bring them. Okay, so no, we, we don't have them yet. We can review them when uh, uh, when he when he's back. So any any further questions on the parking budget? Uh, is there a motion? Uh, I move the amount as printed. Is there a second? Second. Then moved and seconded. Let's go to a vote. Gibbion. Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Micaiah Healy? Yes. Brian Bexman here. Eric Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Jalen Crawford's not here. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. George Koser. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tassi. Yes. Juan De Nascimento. Yes. Uh, Dean Carmen. Yes. David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. The parking budget is approved unanimously. <clears throat> our our guests from. Um... Not yet. They're planning on joining at seven fifty. I think we got through the announcement. In minutes faster than end. Anybody have anything they want to say? So, I've, Charlie, I've got a couple things. Yes. Um, so, I know I have neglected this terribly and it's taken me longer than it should have, but I talked to Christine today about this warrant article about rodenticides. Yes. And um, so, the skinny is, is that Doug Hine believes that the warrant article will not make pass muster with the AG because we can't really forbid the use of materials that the state allows. However, if it survives in some form in terms of the public education it calls for, that public education will cost money. And therefore we should probably do a hearing with the proponent on it, unless you wanna assume that they won't sever its provisions. Am I making sense? Yes. Um, did you have any idea how much it's going to cost? Probably no, not. Christine and I just had a brief conversation about it today, um, but it's probably a question we could ask her tonight to come up with an answer. And it probably depends a lot on what kind of level of effort the proponents are expecting or town meetings expecting if we pass it. What is this article again? This is a warrant. It's, yeah. I'm trying to remember which warrant article it is. It's about banning the use of certain rodenticides. Oh, okay. And there's, if it wasn't for the public education component, there's like three points in it. And the third point is educate the public about these materials. You know, if for some reason that survives, that's the part that will cost money. Somerville was going to electrocute them. Well, that's. That's a capital budget item. <laughs> yeah, a little budget item. Uh, in any case, um, and then I have the answers on Rec and Rink. Um, if we wanted to try to vote those budgets, so that we're getting a little tight to do that at this point. But um, why don't we take that up under old business tonight? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, Tara, I think we should get in touch with the sponsor on that rodenticide. Um, and by the way, good work on pronouncing that word. Um, 
<laughs> I studied Latin in high school, Charlie. <laughs> um, and and that way uh, we can sort out um, what what's what's going on there. If if it's going to have a financial impact, we have to we have to uh, write it up. <clears throat> okay. Looks like Joe Connolly just joined us. Good. Hi, Joe. Um, Hi, everybody. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we can ask um, Christine to, to if she has any comments on that tonight, but uh, we really can't debate it. It's not, a, it hasn't been noticed. Um, and we shouldn't, you know, it should go on the, uh, on the meeting law. Agenda. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking more like just asking her if she would provide an yeah. estimate before the yeah. hearing. Yes, yeah, she could do that. Send it in writing or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have Joe. Here comes Brian Beck. He might have the parking documents. Oh, Brian. Brian Beck. Did Brian get in? There he is, Brian. Yes. Brian, we already enthusiastically voted your parking budget in your absence. Um, oh, cool. Could, could, you, uh, could you enlighten us on the documentation on the park district while we're waiting for the rest of the capital planning? Absolutely. Let me put the correct glasses on. Um, were there any questions about what anything was? Oh, the only item that was open was, you know, reconciling the country, the uh, offset from the district. Well, they, well they, they have to do the parking. Uh, that comes from the parking district. That that budget hasn't been totally finished yet. So I'm waiting for that. There's this better tie into it because that's half the salary of the, um, uh, for, for uh, that goes on the parking district and half goes on the town. So, so they, that number, that number should be forthcoming, but we don't have it yet. Okay. Um, I've spoken to the treasurer who's not necessarily responsible for it, but that's who's given me the numbers in the past. Um, she said that she's trying to get me everything uh, towards that. I can tell you one thing about the parking district budget, and that is that the revenues are running way less than were anticipated or budgeted. I can tell you the number as of December 31st was they had 152000 $573 of income from parking. And in the prior years, that number is normally 500, pre pandemic is 500 to 600,000. So does that mean the budgets um, that the that, uh, district fund is running in the red? It's not running in the red. They haven't, uh, they, again, I haven't seen the numbers from it. Um, but I think they're going to have to tone down what they're going to have to do in the current year for in the, in the you know, in fiscal 23. The, were there any things that they, that they have done that cross over from one year to the next? In the past, yes. Um, I asked about what's going on in Arlington Center, and they said that has nothing to do with the parking district. That has to do with uh, the water and sewer. So if you go okay. into town, you'll see that there's um, work going on there, but that's not, that's not from the uh, parking district budget. Okay. So I see Timor is here. Kate Leary is here. Joe Conley is here. Are we ready to go on the, on the, Sandy uh, now. and Sandy's here. Oh, all the firepower. So um, thank you very much for coming back. Jonathan, do you want to uh, launch on this or Daryl, who's, who's on? Um, I was just going to suggest that Daryl has uh, provided uh, the finance committee with a short slideshow presentation and uh, perhaps he can walk us through that. Okay, can everybody see? Yes, just back. So yeah. hopefully we can get through this this quick quickly, and um, the, the firepower that took the time to attend can uh, keep their powder dry. I guess the expression is. 
Um, so the, the question I had um, was whether the annual playground safety audits and inspections uh, should be capitalized or should be included in an operating budget. And um, we met with um, Timor and Sandy last week, uh, Wanda, John, and I. And uh, Timor uh, pointed us to the um, to last year's capital planning report that um, contained that uh, presented the uh, criteria that the capital planning committee uses to determine what should be capitalized and what should be in the operating budget. And I'm just going to walk through that quickly. Um, So this was the slide that uh, generated my question, uh, particularly this item here about the annual safety inspections and repairs. It sounded uh, more appropriately part of the operating budget to me. Um, so we met, um, so Timor uh, pointed me to the section of the last year's planning report that had uh, the criteria. And as you can see, um, it's, it's pretty detailed. Uh, one thing I did want to stress is this sentence up here at the top um, that these are the uh, definitions that the Arlington CPC uses. Other communities like the state, which was my context, um, uh, may define these terms differently. So I think the two relevant uh, criteria I've highlighted, uh, the first is um, the capital improvement, which is an improvement to a capital asset that me may be reasonably expected to appreciably lengthen the useful life of the capital asset uh, beyond what may be expected with normal maintenance. And then this next paragraph, I think, has actually some useful examples of um, what the CPC considers uh, uh, valid capital expenditures, uh, things like electrical wiring, plumbing, uh, bricking up windows to strengthen a wall, lighting improvements, whereas uh, Interior painting by itself uh, would not be um, considered a valid capital uh, expense. And then finally, item uh, three underneath here, uh, plans or studies in preparation for the purchase of the capital improvement um, are, are valid. And anything else um, needs to be funded through the operating budget. So before I go any further, uh, Timor or Sandy, did you wanna add anything? Or Joe, did you guys wanna add anything? I don't think so. Okay. I'm keep going. We'll take questions. Any questions we that, that arise? Um. So as I said, um, Timur and Sandy took the time um, to meet with us. Um, Sandy actually took time out of a uh, collective bargaining uh, meeting that was invading his office as we were wrapping up the meeting. Um, and then John, uh, Wanda, and I uh, also attended. Um, so this, these are essentially the minutes of the meeting. Um, that inspection activity isn't really an audit, it's more an annual comprehensive re review uh, to ter determine significant needed repair or replacements that are valid under capital. Of the $75,000 uh, amount to be funded, um, 25,000 goes to inspections uh, considered a study, um, and then 50,000 used for repairs, and Timor stressed that these repairs were not things like tightening screws. Uh, these were um, uh, major expenditures that would extend the life of the asset. Um, the town did conduct an audit a couple of years ago um, and some safety issues um, uh, were brought to light. Um, for example, this one, which is a little scary that a child lost part of a finger. Um, so there was a high awareness that something needed to be done. And um, Sandy noted that um, the Capital Planning Committee has funded studies that lead to capital investments. Um, so with all this said, uh, so again, thank you uh, for taking the time out to meet with us. With all that said, uh, I'm satisfied that, um, uh, you know, one, the CPC has you know, clear criteria and that the, um, this particular item aligns with those criteria. So, uh, from my point of view, um, question is asked and answered. Um, Wanda and John, if you want to put out your opinions um, as well. 
No, that covers everything. And, and I concur with that conclusion. Thank you, Daryl. <clears throat> Are there any questions for Daryl or for Timur or Sandy? Or, um, well, um, John, uh, Joe Connolly or, or uh, Katie? Sophie has a question. Yes, Sophie. Hey, thank you. Um, just to follow up, I think this was asked too, was um, is there any possibility that somebody um, within the town offices could get qualifications to do these inspections so that we don't have to outsource the inspections? Is that a possibility? Want me to take that one? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly there is, um, we could have someone internally take, um, go to get certified for a certified playground safety inspector. Um, that would absolutely assist us, I think, in the annual inspections. I think that um, what happened, playgrounds are getting more and more complex. Um, back when I grew up, they were simple steel monkey bars. And there wasn't much to them. Um, so I think that uh, once we did get someone certified, it would probably take them, you know, a, a little bit of a learning curve. Um, so it might be, you know, a year of shadowing, maybe a professional inspector, but I think we could get there. Yes. Any other questions? Um, just whether or not getting someone in house to certified to do this would save us any money like would somebody have the capacity in their current job to add this responsibility i can tell you from the rec department I mean, we have myself and a programmer we don't we would not have the staff within the rec department um current staff within the rec department to take this on that would have the transfer to the department of public works um and sandy would know better than i at their you know their capacities. Sandy, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I, I, I guess my experience has been that um, it's fairly common for communities to outsource this. When I was in Newton, we were big enough that we could hire our own internal. When I was in Amherst, we outsourced it. Um, and so you know, I, I just think it comes down to, as Joe was saying, kind of how big your department is and how much, you know, money you have to, to do this, how many playgrounds. Um, and so th I don't think there's any one single answer, but I think so far uh, we haven't found it um, beneficial to do that in-house. Um, we can just hire it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so if I can just follow up really quick on that, Sandy, generally, though, we look at whether or not hiring somebody versus outsourcing versus overtime is the most cost effective way to perform any piece of labor we need done, correct? Um, yes, and including the benefits, because when you hire somebody, then you have their health insurance and pension. So yes, all those things go into various analysis we do from time to time on all these things. Great, thank you. Any other questions for uh, our visitors, our guests? Okay, um, Jonathan, I think the motion might be in order. Actually, um, Charlie, I understand that um, there's a revised uh, page um, which Sandy is going to uh, walk us through the okay. most important page of these of the capital planning committee's presentation. Well, then we better look at it. Yes. <laughs> so Tara, uh, and he's muted. Thank you. Um, so this week, I got notification from the fire chief that he had heard back from the suppliers of the fire engine that we're going to purchase, um, that prices have gone up on that. He also heard back in a similar manner from the suppliers of the, um, the truck that would carry the lighting and the air 
tank air tank filling machine that prices had gone up on both of those. Uh, it was about $22,000 more for the engine and $11,000 more for the truck. Um, and keeping that in mind and deciding that we really needed to have a vote from town meeting that made sure that when we authorize the purchase of these things that there is enough spending authority to actually buy them. We modified um, the plan in, in three ways. By increasing, one by increasing the uh, prior engine, two by increasing the other truck that is a combination of truck number 10015 and 10016, which you may remember. Um, and then in order to keep the whole plan in balance, we then had to reduce our, um, our total spending by about $12,500, which we did in FY26 by reducing our spending on um, sidewalk improvements. We have it going up every year and now it's just gonna go up a little more slowly in one of the out years. That does not change uh, this part of the slide, um, the FY23 debt service. So Alan, your number with the whale next to it is still the same number. What it does change is um, this figure here for total things that we're buying in FY23 because we had to increase the bonded amount, the purple number here to increase uh, for the cost that we saw. The out years are still part of the plan. There's nothing that you need to vote on that today. It's still, the plan is still within the 5% limit on the overall plan. Um, and I think we are secured against it, the kind of price increases that we think are likely to hit us when we actually buy these fire pieces of fire equipment. So we would ask that your final vote reflect the numbers that are up on the screen. Thank you, Sandy. Arif? Yeah, I have a question. So when you talk about the increase in dollars, can you um, tell us what, what is a percentage increase um, instead of just the 11, 000, you know, what does that mean? Like what is the, in terms of the truck, the 11 to 22,000, whatever it is, with 5%? Uh, the, the, the truck went from 133 to $144,000 and the uh, fire, engine went from, I think it was 675 to $697,000. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what those percentages are, but those so are the like numbers. It's like a 10%, 9% on the first one and the second one is about around the same. But yeah. I guess my, my follow-up question to that is, um, I mean, when you buy these, I mean, again, this is just a, trying to understand the process. So when you bought the, or when you bid, for, there must have been a bid process for these trucks, right? So there must have been a whole process in order to source them. So when you come across a situation like this, when the, when the cost has gone up, um, perhaps eight, 10%, um, does it make sense to go back out into the market to see if there are other trucks that are available that are of a, you know, that can meet the original budget? Or is that, um, how do you guys think about that? So um, those are good questions. Um, with fire trucks, there are um, two or three big companies that um, produce fire trucks. Um, Pierce and uh, E1 are really the, the two kind of around here that people buy from. Um, they, uh, and E1 is the one that our chiefs have been using for several years. We used to have a lot of Pierce engines, but we've been buying E1 engines more recently, uh, in part because E1s tend to be uh, a little bit cheaper, a little bit less expensive, I guess I should say, by about $50,000 a, a pop than the Pierce. Um, and since we have the capacity in-house with our own mechanics to make repairs to these things as needed, we have uh, continued you know, buying these, these pierces. Um, 
So we don't go out to the market again, but we do um, we do look around and we do try to buy what we think is the most economical as well as, as the most compatible uh, engines with uh, what our staff can continue to maintain and repair. Errol. Um, so Sandy, I'm assuming that an actual purchase order can't be cut until it has been approved by town meeting, right? That's right. We are we are in contact with these truck manufacturers, but a contract cannot be signed until July 1st, when the new fiscal year begins after the town meeting vote. Um, but we do try to get some sense of pricing. And um, we did that originally, and then they reached out to us not too long ago to say, hey, you know, their supplies are coming under pressure. Um, and they um, wanted to warn us that it's likely that by the time we actually put the bid in in July, there would be a an increase in the in the overall price. Oh, so that's that's the ex, that's the expected price increase for July. So you, you're not concerned that there would be, who knows these days during uncertain times, but at this point you're not concerned that there would be additional price increases. No, I I mean I, <laughs> we're all trying to gaze through our crystal balls at right, this point, right. but uh, I think this is a reflection of what our um, our supplier has said is, you know, he sees in the market and, and wanted to give us a heads up about it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for <clears throat> Sandy or Timor? Okay, so um, Jonathan, I think motion is in order. Charlie, am I misremembering? I, I... I, I thought that Al Tosti had already made a motion uh, last Monday. Am, am I making this up? Uh, if he did, he's, we have to make a different motion because um, this is a different number. Okay, well, then I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, approve the uh, capital budget as printed here on this recommended vote page. Second. So it's been moved and seconded for uh, the capital budget uh, cash acquisitions of $3,426,277. Debt service of 19,144,620. Other acquisition of 3,806,500. And appropriations for bonded acquisitions of authorization for borrowing of $2,252,100. Uh, that's been moved and seconded. Is there any further question or discussion? Okay, then we'll move to a vote. Grant Gibeon. Yes. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis is not here. I'm here, I'm here now. And I oh, say you're yes. here now. Okay, John Ellis. Yes. Um, Nikaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wall? Yes. Jaylene Crawford is not here. Uh, Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Uh, Dean Carmen? Abstain. David McKenna? Yes. We have 17 in favor, one abstention, and no um, objections. So the uh, capital budget um, article is passed. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Timur, Sandy, Kate, 
John for coming in and uh, Wanda, John, and mm -hmm. thank you for following up on those other issues. Appreciate everybody's mm -hmm. effort. Charlie? Yes. Could, could, would it be all right if Sandy sticks around for three minutes and we do the answer to one question on the wreck and rink stuff that he may have the best answer to? I, it's an open meeting. He can stick around all night. No, no, but if we could do that now, I know Christine's here, but if we could just squeeze it in for a couple minutes. Uh, by all means. Hi, time. Christine. Welcome to Finance Committee. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Or who, okay. who has the question? Who has the question? What's the question? So the, there were two questions that were asked that were the reason, the reason we did not vote wreck and rink yet. And one of those questions was about the uh, the amount of the balance of the fund. And oh, yes. Andy kindly sent me the answer, which is I can if I can share my screen, which I think I should be able to do, I can show you the answer. So the answer shows up in the budget message on page 215, but here's the thing that we probably wanna know that this doesn't answer, which is how did the fund go from $371,000 in 2020 to the $700 plus $1,000 that are in it now? And I thought Sandy might be able to speak to that or tell us when he could get us an answer because that's part of what's hanging us up is why did it make this big jump between the 2020 ending balance and the 2021 ending balance or whatever the last ending balance is. Um, Joe is still not here, is he? I don't know if Joe is still here. Okay, so um, he would know this definitely at the top of his head. I think one of the reasons is that um, one point we consolidated all the activities of recreation into the enterprise fund and we stopped really using the um, revolving fund. We still do have the revolving fund, but it isn't used for that much. And so uh, we basically dumped a lot of the activity into the rec recreation fund and um, then at that point, the balance ended up going up. Okay. Does that make so sense? This was Al Tosti's question. So I guess the question is, Al, are you satisfied with that answer? So we can vote this budget after Health and Human Services. Now I'm trying to remember. You were concerned that we couldn't tie the current balance back to like a, a set of balances. Like this shows the balance over time here in Recreation Enterprise. And you can see there was a jump, but then it dropped at the end of 2020. And now we're saying it's back up. And I'm not sure whether or not, Sandy's saying the explanation is some consolidation of funds, but. Yeah, I remember that happened a, a couple of years ago. And uh, one, of the, one of the problems I'm having with a lot of the enterprise funds is positives or negatives and negatives or positives. Mm -hmm. the, the way the parentheses are handled. Um, but I, I do remember we consolidated the uh, revolving fund. So uh, that sounds reasonable to me. Okay. And, and, and if I might, Alf has talked to me about, about the positives and the negatives and in next year's budget, we'll make all the numbers look positive. We just try to put a positive spin on everything. <laughs> well, looking positive is the way we would like them all to look. <laughs> okay, that, that was my only um, thing I wanted to squeeze in, Charlie. We can move on. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, by the way, before we go too far, I, I, Natasha Witten, is that you? Is that your name I see on the screen here? Um, you weren't on the finance committee meeting last week, but I did want to um, congratulate you on being the um, representative Clark's invitee to the State of the Union address. Thank you so much. I'm just here to listen in on the Health and Human Services uh, budget. So thank you very much. It was really an honor and thanks for recognizing us. Okay. Um, 
So, Andy, this is your budget, right? Yes, this is my budget. Um, so what I think I would like the order of operations to be here is to allow Christine to make a brief presentation to sort of give you the big picture on what the Health and Human Services Department is doing and what the pressures on it are. And then to walk through the budgets and have Christine stay here as a resource to answer our questions. Um, should the questions that uh, Wanda and I got answers to not be clear or our notes not make sense to us anymore or whatever, so that we can just get to the end of all the questions on this budget and vote it tonight. Um, and then with that wreck and rink, I will feel less like I'm keeping us from writing our report. Um, so does that sound like a good order of operations, Charlie? Is Sounds that like a good, that's a good order of battle, yes. So Christine, the finance committee, and um, please go ahead. Thank you. I think Sandy wanted to wave goodbye. Bye, Sandy. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Bye, Sandy. <laughs> um, if it's okay, I'd like to share my screen. I just have a brief um, PowerPoint, sort of, um, if that works for everyone. Uh, let me see. Yes, you should be able to do that. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. All right. So, actually. Sorry, I'm not able to, okay, I'll start here. Sorry, I'm just having a hard time because I'm trying to, here we are, okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna scroll back to the beginning. Um, all right, so, okay, there we go. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, so I'm the Health and Human Services Director here in town and I've been in my role since 2006. I've been through a, a lot of um, changes over the course of the past um, 15 plus years um, in my role. Um, as you can see, these are the divisions of Health and Human Services. So we've got the Health Department, Veteran Services, Council on Aging, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. And then you'll see um, the COA transportation program is an enterprise fund. So it's one of the budgets you'll be voting on, but we usually um, uh, lump that in under the council on aging. So I'll do that throughout my presentation. But what I wanna just um, share with you is that these divisions um, employ some of the most dedicated, creative, um, brilliant individuals that I've ever worked with. Um, we're so lucky here in Arlington to have these individuals that are so dedicated and passionate about the work that they do to serve our community. Um, we do so much with so little, um, and I say so little. Uh, the budgets that you'll see may seem large, but um, the amount of um, services that our community is getting from these budgets um, just is, is top notch. So um, the first one I'm going to, to bring you to is the health department. So as you know, the health department was thrust into the forefront of the past two years. Um, so both the environmental health um, unit as well as the disease prevention and control, those two areas really were the, the heart and soul of COVID response here in town. Um, when we look at the ARPA funds that our, our, our community received, um, we received some funds to address public health and we're looking at um, improving public health infrastructure. So what we saw over the course of the past few years, so environmental health is really where you see inspections, you'll see food inspections, housing inspections, nuisance, um, you know, rodent inspections, a lot of the, the inspections that our department does. That, that, that group of individuals re was really working hard on enforcing the governor's orders, enforcing the mask mandate, working with small businesses to comply with um, COVID response and, and to really answer questions of the community. We had a lot of community members that were really scared and nervous. And so those individuals really stepped up and were out in our community daily, just helping people. Um, you know, our, our community um, really need, had a lot of needs beyond just um, what, our departments offered and, and our, our, our divisions really stepped up. Disease prevention and control the individuals in that group. So we, we have a lot of cross 
um, jurisdiction response. So the inspectors were doing a lot of the contact tracing and contact tracing, as you may know, is when someone's positive with COVID or positive with any communicable disease, they're, um, they are entered into our system, the state system, and we receive those reports and we follow up with those individuals to make sure that we're preventing the further spread of the disease. So our, our um, entire staff was working around the clock on contact tracing. Um, and, and as you may remember, vaccinations, testing, there are all these different things that popped up that our department really stepped up and was able to, to manage locally. There were a lot of offerings at the state level. So for example, contact tracing was something that was, um, was offered um, by the state and there were millions of dollars dumped into the contact tracing collaborative at the state level. But what we found here locally was that that was not not enough for our community. Our community members that were testing positive were not getting phone calls right away. We were able to locally provide a better um, response. Our contact uh, tracing at the state level was, was maybe contacting people four or five days after they tested positive, whereas our team was right on it, right away, able to get out to people and, and communicate the 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 details of what they needed to do so it was really important that we were able to pivot and really have staff available to do that so as you'll see in the um, budget um, there were some additions over the course of the past few years and um, that was made possible through cares funds and now we're pivoting over to continue some of that through ARPA funding and that will end in uh, three years and so um, we have plans to um, address that as time goes on so um, the other area that we're looking to um, improve with some of the ARPA funds is just the infrastructure so we know that across the state across the country and around the world the public health infrastructure was really tested we know some of the areas we need to work, work on and focus on on, so we're, we're going to be using some of that funding to address those areas. Um, we've also been into a partnership with the cities of Somerville and Medford um, for a regional partnership on doing some of this contact tracing and some of the surveillance disease surveillance. Um, so we hope to be able to improve those, those areas through that partnership. We're also entering into a partnership with the town of Belmont to share a public health nurse as well, um, utilizing some of the ARPA funds. So, so some of those areas that we're looking at um, will hopefully improve our, our ability to respond. As we all know, you know, the, the end of COVID, people are really living their lives again, but we, we in public health are always really on the forefront of trying to figure out if, if that is, um, you know, you know what, what the next variant is, when is the next vaccination clinic? We're always working, we're always planning. Um, emergency planning is one of the big areas that we work on in our department. And had we not had that for the past, you know, 20 plus years that I've been in the town of Arlington, we probably would have been in a very different response situation for COVID. So um, I'm gonna move on to the next slide because I don't wanna take too much time, but I know veteran services is another area that we have um, as a division of health and human services. We have one veterans agent here in town. This is another, so back to the public health, public health is a mandated required department within a community. Veteran services is another mandated required um, department within a, a community. So we're mandated to have a veterans agent within our community and we're mandated by state law to provide direct service, direct dollars to veterans um, that, that financially qualify. So our community provides direct uh, financial support, as you can see in the aid and assistance line in the budget, in the veteran services budget, we provide direct financial service to uh, veterans in need. So the state then reimburses us 75% of the dollars that we spend in that area. And then anything um, that's related to housing and emergency housing support, we receive 100% reimbursement from the state. Um, the chapter, the state law is uh, MGL chapter 115. Some people like to look it up and just kind of verify um, you're welcome to do that. And I'm happy to, to go into more detail if that's needed. Um, our veteran services director, Jeff Chunglo is, um, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we have some of the most creative and um, amazing staff. Jeff Chunglo is um, the director of veteran services and some of you may have met him throughout the years. Another just amazing person really out to support our, our veterans. Um, so Jeff does um, a lot of work to help seek out veterans. Um, he does a lot of outreach to find new veterans that have come into our community, veterans that have been out in our community that we may not have ever connected with. Um, he does a lot of that outreach. Um, 
by reaching out to families of veterans. Um, he reaches out to veterans living in subsidized housing. Um, he's able to provide them with the resources um, to access VA claims. So a lot of our veterans are eligible for the federal pensions or um, if they were disabled in any of the wars, they're able to access uh, funds through, you know, monthly funds through that, that source. That's a federal source. That's outside of the funding that we receive, that we, we provide. Um, so Jeff is able to connect them with various um, health benefits as well, um, which, you know, again, it goes above and beyond. So, so our veterans director is providing support in, in many ways to our veterans. In addition to the veterans services that we provide directly to veterans, um, there are a number of veterans um, uh, events that are planned by our, our, our director of veteran services. And this is another way that we're able to access or to find new veterans in the community. Um, and as you may see from some of the capital budgets over the course of the past few years, um, we are looking at um, putting in a place a new veterans memorial. The current uh, memorial is um, does not include all of the names of veterans that have served in um, wars. Um, so we're looking to update that veterans memorial. Um, so we'll go on to the next division of the department. So this is the Council on Aging, and this looks like when when we first were trying to figure out how to show what we do, um, you know, I, I want to apologize because it looks like we're all over the place, and we are. And so, um, you know, at the heart of it, we are uh, we have the Council on Aging staff, and we, um, you know, we are about to open up our new community center, which was formerly the senior center. So over the course of the past few years. Not only have we been dealing with a pandemic, but we've been living in a construction zone. So our building, the community center, which is really the hub of all the action that goes on in the Council on Aging, um, that hub will, will open, reopen to our community. And, and we're, we're really just on the cusp of that happening. So we're really excited. Um, I've here kind of laid out four areas that the Council on Aging is able to provide. The COA provides um, services to our community members that are 60 and over. And that really counts for a quarter of our population here in Arlington. So about you know, 10,000, almost 10,000 residents as of um, in the last census are 60 and over. And, and that's growing as we all know. Um, so in the Council on Aging, we um, at the bottom, I've listed the, the funding sources because I think you know as the FinCom, that's what you really care most about, I'm assuming. Um, so we've obviously received some town funds. We've got state funds, which is EOEA, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. We receive a per senior dollar amount from the state, um, and that we we use that to uh, pay for staff and for programs. Um, we also receive foundation funds, grants, uh, donations, and user. We collect user fees to run our programs. Um, so. We have social workers in the department that are really <clears throat> connecting our, our residents need with resources to keep them um, active in our community and, and healthy as well as um, able to live here. Because as we all know, um, the costs are, are, are getting up there for some of our older population. And, and so our social workers are continuously connecting those seniors with, with resources. Um, we have a geriatric nurse who works a lot with um, seniors uh, around wellness. Uh, we, of course, through our community center, hope to provide a, a, a high degree of socialization. We've missed out on that over the course of the past two years, and our seniors have suffered significantly as a result of having to um, cancel various holidays with family, um, having to, to stay away from people. So to reopen and to allow the socialization and the gathering again for this, this population is, is crucial and has been um, something that we're really eager to do. We offer speakers, art classes, exercises, so many things that are offered at the senior center, at the community center. And we are very excited to start that. And then transportation, that's a whole budget, um, you, which you've probably seen that's un, under the transportation enterprise fund. Um, we offer rides to uh, persons 60 and over uh, to a number of different areas. We utilize taxi rides, Ubers. Um, we provide MBTA discounts. We do um, curb to curb rides. So people are picked up at their house and they're brought to their location, whether it's a medical appointment or to the um, community center, and then they're brought back to their home after. And it's, um, it's a service that um, people really appreciate, especially those that are unable to drive or find par parking wherever they're going. Um, so uh, that's the Council on Aging. Um, the next is diversity, equity, inclusion. For those of you that have been around on the FinCom for a while, you know that this is somewhat of a new division. Um, we 
through Health and Human Services have been very fortunate to um, be able to, to establish this as a division. Um, DEI, which is what we're all calling it, is um, you know, an incredibly important area that I think um, you know, we're just beginning to uh, put in place in local cities and towns across the country. Um, we are looking here in Arlington to add two additional positions. So as you may remember last year, we had a program a program assistant. We took that position out and we, we converted it to the ADA coordinator because what we saw was that there was just a greater need to deal with the ADA issues. What we see is that there are a lot of grant opportunities um, through the ADA um, various resources at the state and federal level. And by having someone that can focus on that, we're able to, I believe we're gonna be able to pull in some extra dollars to help improve some of um, our buildings, some of our programs. And so by um, having a person focus on that, we'll be able to, I, in my opinion, uh, pull in some, some funding to support um, improving our community. And then the other area, which will be ARPA funded for two and a half years, um, which will begin this, this upcoming July, is the Outre Outreach and Engagement Coordinator. This person will be focused solely on going out into our community and, and working directly with residents. Um, what we know is that our director of DEI is doing kind of the macro level work um, to address um, equity issues across our community, working um, big picture again with the school system. She's working directly with Margaret, our new DEI. EI person at the schools. Um, and, and so this outreach and engagement coordinator will be able to go out in the community and really kind of work directly with residents um, that, that are um, you know, in, in need of, of, of engaging with the, with the town. So this is um, an exciting uh, change here, um, utilizing some of the ARPA funds. Um, and then last, but of course not least, is the Arlington Youth Counseling Center, AYCC. Um, so AYCC, uh, has been around for over 40 years. And in 2008, uh, for those of you that have been on the FinCom for a while, know that we were facing elimination of this program. And it was um, really a lot of work um, to switch the way that the, the center was funded. So the center had always been entirely funded through town funds. And so we were able to um, shift that and make this an entirely um, FIFA service model. So it's a license. This is a licensed mental health counseling center for youth and families in town. We are providing direct mental health treatment and um, providing us a, a, a resource to our, our residents that no other community in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts offers. This is something that is unique in that um, our uh, residents are able to access mental health counseling right here in town um, for either, you know, just utilizing their, using their health insurance or low cost for those that maybe um, are, are between insurances. So as you can see, um, uh, we have, worked really hard to pull in all sources of funds. If one source drops because maybe the state revenue goes away, we know that we're gonna be pulling in, we're gonna to have to bump up something else. And we're always pivoting and looking for ways to bring in extra money and to, to make this, this incredibly important division um, self-sustaining. So we have been, like I said, since 2008, been, been doing this um, insurance and fees. As you can see, we collect medical insurance and um, co-payments, and that's our biggest source. The town provides $120,000. It's the same amount that we have been getting since 2008. So I'm proud to say that we've been able to really grow um, our insurance and fees, and, and we have been able to bring in state revenue. Um, through the support of our state legislators, which um, has been amazing as well. Um, and then as you can see, ARPA will support um, an increase. So we are seeing a major increase in need in this area um, as a result of two years of isolation um, and you know, everything that's been going on in the world. And so the intensity of the, the need um, has grown and the number of cases of youth needing access to this service has grown. So that ARPA funds we're looking to utilize to bump up staff hours um, which will be a three-year temporary bump. Um, we hope that in three years we can sort of scale back um, because these positions are, um, they, these, are, these are individuals and roles that, that can, can go up in time and go down in time. They have additional jobs outside of AYCC, so they can, they can shift their time. But we're really looking at the next three years being uh, an intensive, um, you know, trying to, trying to uh, address the need um, in, the, in the community. 
So that's just a really basic macro level overview of um, the divisions of health and human services. And Annie, I wanna just send it back to you um, if you wanted to start asking questions or present the actual budgets. Yeah, I'm going to, um, uh, Grant, do you wanna ask your question now or do you wanna ask it after we're looking at the actual budget? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, but I'd like to, if you don't mind, ask it now. Sure. Actually, just two questions. Um, that was a fantastic presentation. And uh, who prepared the PowerPoint? Me. <laughs> Thank you. I use Canva. I know I showed my husband. He asked the same question. Where did you get this? It's Canva. <laughs> Feel free to check it out online. Oh, I have checked it out. <laughs> that's, that's, wait. So the other question I had, and I, while you're on national TV, um, where is the new community center? The same place it's always been. It's 27 Maple Street. It's the senior center. We're rebranding it because the new, um, the new way of the world is to not call, call people 16 over seniors. It's to call them part of our community. <laughs> these, are, these are members of our community and we're, we want them to be part of our community. So it's a, it's a new shift in thinking. Great. Well, that's a great plug. Once again, great, great presentation and, and also a fantastic job with the AYCC too. So that was my questions. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, Andy, why don't we do the budget? Yep. Let me just get to the, I'll show my screen, Tara. I just want to get to the right place. Okay. All right. So this is the health and human services budget itself. And um, I believe if you take a look at this, the only change in the um, expenses at least is the $5,000 increase in contracted services. And Christine, I'm sure we talked about this, but I do not remember what we said it was. But you had so a we had part. yep. So we had um, fifty four eighty was a salary. Uh, we had a sealer of weights and measures that we had um, paid a few hours per week in, under the salaries. That we shifted that over to contract. We're going to be contracting that service moving forward instead of hiring a person. Great, excellent. And you so, can you zoom in on that a little bit? Ah, uh, can I zoom in on that a little bit? I think I can. Do that in the PDF. Nope, hang on a second. Let me get. I go the other way. Yeah. There we go. Better? Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Okay. Um, so I guess at this point, I would just ask if anybody's got any other questions on the expenses. Everything else is pretty flat after over last year's budget um, because I want to look at the salaries on the detail page because as you can see, the salaries are going up, um, but so are the offsets. And I think that's where the ARPA funded positions show up. Yeah, so I have Any a question questions? on the salaries. So if Annie, you can get to that, that'd be great. All right, anybody got, let me just quick see if anybody's got any questions on the expenses. Uh, uh, Annie, uh, I, I have a question, sorry about sure. the rodent control. Um, if you can um, talk about the 2000 and the 40,000, or the, I'm sorry, the, the actual uh, budget on the rodent control. Christine, do you know yep. why there's? Yep. <laughs> so we've always um, received 40,000 in this line, but as you may remember, 2020, 2021, um, we had COVID and so our department um, not only did we see a decrease in the amount of food coming out of restaurants and the, the number of rodents was sort of, it was less, we also just didn't have staff dedicated to um, doing that work. So it, it um, is still needed. We just, at that time, we were focused on COVID response, so. Okay. Any other questions on the expenses? Arif has a, Arif, you, your hand is up. He's waiting for salaries, Charlie. Okay. So I'm gonna to scroll to the salary page. We'll come back if anybody decides there are other questions. Okay. So this is the 
salary page and you can see uh, that we have make it uh, bigger please sorry uh, even if i make it bigger it's not gonna look that good there oh that works nicely okay um so i believe the biggest change here um is the amount of um uh offset we're getting from arpa but arif why don't you ask your question yeah, no, I'm just trying to understand where that differential is coming from, because if you go back to the other page, mm -hmm. there was a, what is it, $90,000, something like yes. that. Yeah, so if you could explain that, that'd be good. Christine, that's uh -huh, the addition. Yes. So, yeah, so this is the first year we have really added in all of the um, additional um, offsets. So I, I think that the goal was, um, at least from the town manager's, town manager's office was to get every single position, every single hour worked on these sheets. So you're, you're gonna see just that, that $90,000 increase there, but it's being offset by um, you know, all of these, these, these sources. So we um, added another nurse position um, for, through ARPA, uh, and then we shifted two inspectors off of CARES and moved them over to ARPA. So you'll see there's, um, ARPA is 221,000. So the, the addition was that nurse, which is listed here as vacant. And then um, I think the additional is just the, the, the general increases that we, we typically see year to year. So, so the follow on on that is that once the ARPA money goes away, what happens to those positions? So that's a great question. Um, one of the one of the positions has already um, the person has left the position, so our goal was not to fill that. Um, the other position we obviously um, is we have somebody in that role for now, um, and we have three years of funding. So I think that's a year to year decision. Um, we for the nurse. Um, ARPA, the, the laws are pretty strict that we can't add positions that will require the town or, or city government to um, continue or, or have to continue that funding afterwards. So we know that with um, the infrastructure that we're building now with some of the ARPA funds, um, we know that we're able to um, establish, a, well, we have a revolving fund, which we use to um, purchase vaccines and then we administer vaccines. So money comes in and goes out out of that revolving fund. Um, we know that uh, as we move forward with COVID and influenza, our, uh, our revolving fund will be able to support, we're hopeful that that revolving fund will be able to support that part-time position with um, Belmont, that, that ARPA funded nurse that we have on, on here now. Um, that is, that is the goal. That is what we're hoping for. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. Alan Jones. Thank you. I, I just wanted to, to point out that what you don't see in this is the position that's gone away. As Christine said, it, it's the position has been um, uh, eliminated by retirement or whatever. It's going to the contracting position. So in the, in the finance committee report that will show up with a footnote that says that position has essentially been moved from an employee to a contract, as, as you've been explained, but you don't see it in this table. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Any other, other questions on this budget? Go ahead, Andy. Thank you. Okay. Do we want to look at the other budgets before we vote, or do we want to vote this budget, Charlie? Let's Maybe. let's go through the other budgets and then we'll All come right. back to the budget. So our next budget is Veterans Services, and you can see that Veterans Services is basically flat. Um, the question that I had asked Christine is, you know, do we have, are we seeing a reduction in the number of veterans? Or, um, you know, I would have thought that would be a growing population still, but I think, Christine, you had a really good answer, which is just we have a really good agent and he works really hard to get them benefits from other places so that our costs don't go up and to make sure that they are served. So I guess, um, Christine, if you want to add anything, I think you pretty much covered that already, but um, if people have questions, Alan, do you have another question or you still got your hand up? Okay. Anybody got any questions about this budget? 
Uh, I do actually, any. <clears throat> so, um, where's the uh, where's the offset uh, from the state reimbursement? Um, Danny, do you want me to answer that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, that we've never included that in here because that money comes in um, after. So that's not going. That money comes in months later. So it could be three months, four months later. So it. Um, it has never shown, we don't usually put that on here, but we can anticipate a 75% reimbursement. And in, in our, like I said, our veterans agent being um, top notch really does work hard to make sure that that full 75% comes back. Um, so I, I guess that's a question for um, the town manager's office. I can certainly ask um, so, why. But it goes into the general fund. It's, it not, it's not being spent by your department, it's my question. No. No, it goes into the general fund. That's right. I think actually it's on the cherry sheet. Yes, actually, that is where it would show up. So that comes into general fund, Charlie, and I think yep. it's in here. We could we could check it against the cherry sheet. No, I that Al's right. Okay. All right. Other questions about veterans, or can I go to the next thing? Go right ahead, Annie. Okay. Yeah, and there's just the one position. Um, so not much going on there. Okay. And then we get to council on aging and this is the council on aging itself. This is not yet the transportation fund. Am I correct? Or is this the transportation? Nope, that's just the regular council on aging. Okay. Uh, Christine, this is where we have the change that we know is coming in, which is that that offset is actually larger than this, do you have the exact number for that offset? Yes. Of course, I. It's ninety-five thousand four ninety-four. Let me just confirm that actually. Ninety-four. No, I'm sorry. It's ninety-six one one five. Ninety-six one one five. Okay. So, I'm just gonna walk this through a little bit. There we go. Uh, wait a minute. Where am I? There we go. Okay. So Christine and I talked today and she talked to Sandy and she had discovered that this offset number was too low and that that offset is actually um, the larger number. And so let's make sure I keep straight my tabs. Okay. So over here, I did the math on that. And so the corrected taxation total on Council on Aging would be $402,000. And that is a much smaller increase over last year. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's not 12%. It's more like 2% or less. Two and a half. Okay, Alan's got it, two and a half percent. Um, so when we come to vote this budget, I'm actually going to jump us over to look at these numbers. We're going to vote the corrected number. So just to, to jump in, Annie, um, Sandy said if you vote the current budget as is, um, yep. knowing that there's that surplus, that just goes, that reverts back to free cash at the end. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't spend it. But I think he had thought that that would be probably the easiest way to manage this, this error, which I guess is a good error to have as opposed yes. to the other one. I mean, I, I, think, I think as far as the committee's concerned, it's six and one half a dozen to the other. What it does for us, if we actually apply it to the bottom line, is it makes the increase in this department much smaller, which always makes us happier. And it's also accurate. Yes, it's also accurate. Okay. And, and, trans and transparent. Okay. Um, Any questions for Annie on... Uh, the aging. expense budget. I think the expense budget is pretty flat. So we should go to the salaries. Yeah, let's go look at the salaries and see what that increase in the salaries was. And I think it was we added a new position, but it's offset by elder affairs. And again, same problem. We don't have the right number for the offset here. 
But if you increased that offset, it would offset the, which of these positions was the new position? It's the so second the position. Yep, the positions have always been in place. We just now show them on the budget, uh, this budget sheet. So witty, Dana witty, um, some of uh, GD Gandhi's hours, some of um, Sliney hour, Sliney's hours, and some of August's hours. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody that this is money we've always received, but we've just not shown it on the budget before, so yeah, now we're showing the full salaries and the offset. I think this is part of the Julie Wayman explanation of several weeks back. Any further questions for Annie on the um, Council on Aging Salaries budget? Okay. Okay. And then we get to diversity, equity, equity, and inclusion. And again, you can see the expenses are flat. The difference is in the salary and the offsets. Um, and the taxation total increase is 21%. Um, the explanation is, as Christine provided it, that we're adding this outreach position. And Christine, is that the full ARPA offset? Let me just scroll down to salaries yes. real quick and see. Yes. Yeah, and we're offsetting that with ARPA money. Um, questions on the expenses, questions on the salaries. Shane Blundell. Shane. Yes, thank you. I'm just curious so what, what kind of programming you see for the future um, for the coming year that you hope to, what are some goals or projects you envision? Uh, well, <laughs> so we have a director of DEI who um, manages the, the division. So with the, the new outreach and engagement coordinator, I mean, obviously the goal would be for that person to get out into the community um, to engage with, with residents. Um, we have a number of trainings and programs planned. Um, and then the DEI director also works with the three commissions, the Human Rights Commission, the Disability Commission, as well as the Rainbow Commission. And so there are lots of projects and programs going on within those divisions as well. Um, I don't know if that it's kind of a big picture answer, but I, I'm happy to get more into more detail. I, you know, we've got the annual report and our goals objectives are all laid out in the financial plan. I can share that with you if you'd like. Yes, that'd be great. I'm, I'm supportive, but yeah, if there's any information that you can share afterwards, thanks. Yeah. Um, Christine, just really quickly, can you remind me what the $36,000 in consulting is? I, I mean, part of that is, I know powerful pathways, but what? Yeah, so the, yeah the real training is also part of that as well, which is the racial equity um, and learning. And, and, and that's something that we are putting in place across all the departments and divisions in town. Um, it's been a, an incredibly valuable um, program that we've we've been able to, to we started it before COVID, literally the month before COVID, and then um, we've done one additional follow up during COVID. So that was virtual. We're hoping to get back in person because of the work that we need to do within town government um, is is a lot to do. So we're hoping to kick that back off again. Excellent. So that's training for town staff. So, Christine, um, during COVID, did you do the training or not? And if you didn't do it, did you save the money? So we did do a training during COVID, yes. So one training cost $36,000? So there was another program that we ran called um, with the consultant called Powerful Pathways. Um, and she was running trainings within the community for residents. So that, that shifted over to working with our community. Um, so that, so there are two different trainings that, that we were using that funding for. And that training was 36,000 for the powerful pathways. So what, what does that include? In other words, how many <laughs> meetings or hours or what, what is it? Uh, I have the contract. I don't. I don't know the details of it. I'm so sorry, but um, there were. Uh, I want to say there were probably weekly meetings that we had with the coordinator of Powerful Pathways for a, a pretty good chunk of time. Um, she did a number of trainings within the. Uh, basically, um, she she offered a number of programs within the community um, in collaboration with Jill and worked directly with some of our residents. 
um, and supported some of our residents around these issues as well. Um, I could pull up the contract that we had with her if that's helpful. I don't know the details off the top of my head. It's been about a year since we've done that work. So I participated in the training series for residents, Charlie, and I think it was like six or eight meetings um, with, with you know, uh, presentations, materials, um, three members of powerful pathway, powerful pathways staff present, uh, small group breakouts with those staff members, so on and so forth. So it was it was pretty intense. And then, if I recall correctly, Christine didn't um, didn't power, powerful pathways also work on some of the assessment of uh, where everybody in the police department was at on these issues. They did, yes. Yeah. So there was also some intensives with. We're just just listening to um, folks in the police department, um, sort of, you know, uh, how how do you feel, right? Um, so, does that answer your question, Charlie? Because I got Sophie and Arif stacked up. Um, partially. Uh, go go ahead, Arif. Arif, your oh, hands. Up. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basically similar to, perhaps similar to what's being asked, uh, Christine, is uh, this, you know, this training and the money being spent and you have your own staff as well, that's I'm sure is quite um, well qualified to run these trainings, uh, perhaps. Um, and, and, and I guess my macro question is perhaps it's from naivety, um, perhaps not, is how do you measure return on investment for this stuff? I mean, it's all loosey-goosey, I understand that, but we are finance people. So I'm trying to understand what's the return on investment metric that you measure or what kind of, um, what is your metric for seeing success? It is um, incredibly difficult to measure um, year to year. I mean, this is something that took 400 years to get to, right? And so it's going to take some time for us to, to move the needle. And that's really what it's all about is to move the needle in a po the positive direction. And, um, you know, it, it do we do um, surveys and try to gather information about what people are learning and how things are changing? Um, yes, but I mean, it's almost, um, it, it's not something I, I, that- I'm Sorry to interrupt you, but wait, I, wait, I just- wait. Arif, sorry. don't interrupt, please. Yeah, I, I, I apologize Arif. for interrupting, but- Charlie, I need to understand. I understand. Let her, let her finish. Let her finish her statement. Have you finished? Yeah. I'm finished. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so okay, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> look, and I'm, I'm struggling with the words because this is such a, you know, uh, charged subject that if I say something incorrect, you're going to all come after me, um, mm -hmm. and 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 certainly uh, I want to be careful. Um, but at the same time, I feel a bit frustrated because um, as, as having been a consultant in various capacities myself, always a technical and financial and, and so forth, but not, not this type of consulting, how does one understand and, 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 um, and quantify a, a, a charge that a consultant proposes uh, and and how do you how do you uh, choose amongst consultants one who may charge ten thousand another another who may charge twenty another who may charge fifty um, you know uh, I understand the consulting tiers in business certainly if I choose a McKinsey over a, a Deloitte I know what I'm getting and what I'm paying for so I'm just trying to I'm just trying to understand how do you that's why I asked the question of return on investment, but then return on investment is always based on the cost component. And then, um, so, so if you can help me there, that's fine. If not, uh, I will not interrupt you again and take whatever your answer is and move on. Okay. Um, so we, when, when choosing consultants, we, we, we have a, a whole list of areas we evaluate. We use a tool, um, you know, and, and, and you're right, it is, it's, it's not as um, clear as maybe a technical um, consulting that, that you know, another department may be looking at, um, but, but there are standards that we, we look for. We wanna make sure that there has been experience doing this in other communities, that there's, um, you know, that there are measurements that, that 
that these consultants are able to meet, you know, like steps that they're able to take in order to meet various requirements. Um, it, it's, it's um, you know, changing, uh, changing people's beliefs over over years is something that's hard to measure so um, you know I think we're we're looking at best practices that have been in, that, that have been in, put in place in other communities um, to, to make changes and so that's that's really sort of what it comes down to we we are members of um, GARE, which is um, a, a national organization um, that really has been pushing this this initiative um, out through various communities across the country and looking at best practices. It's it's um, something we're all still learning, and um, so I think that I hope that answers a portion of your question. Thank you, Christine. Sophie. Yes, thank you. Um, so, if I understood correctly, on this consulting, it's sort of half for staff and half for residents. Could you tell us how many residents are actually participated? I, I think. If you said it, I'm sorry, I missed it. I didn't say. I I don't know. I'll have. I would have to find that out from direct, the director. Um, okay. I might be able to answer that. Um, I, I would say there were 50 or 60 people uh, attending each session, um, and the cast of characters changed a little bit. So maybe 70 in total, Sophie. Um, okay. Because you know there was always some people who didn't make one session or another. Um, but for, from my personal experience, it was a really impactful training. Um, I might add one quick note that might help you with this idea of measuring this kind of change. When I worked at Youth Build USA, one of the questions we used to measure the effect of our programming on young people was, you know, sort of what are your plans for the future? And frequently young people coming into the program would say, well, I don't have really have any plans for the future. I don't know if I'll be here after I'm 30. And at the end of the program, we saw it as a success if the answer to that question was, um, you know, I want to be there for my grandchildren. So, you know, it's, it's not as quantifiable as what those of us in finance are used to kind of looking at. It's much, much more subjective and it can be hard to find the question that will get you the answer. So, Annie, I'm curious, since you participated, is this something you think residents, like they do one time and then that's it, they're sort of done for the year, they're not gonna come back year after year? Or is this something where residents would keep, wondering if at some point residents stop going, at what point do we say not enough residents participate that it's not worthwhile? Well, I, I think part of what Christine and Christine will correct me if I'm wrong, is saying is that the, the, the money this year is going to be spent on intensive training for towns staff. So imagine that what you're doing is you're centrally training town staff on how to be uh, um, uh, aware in their interactions with the public and with each other, you know, their, their staff, their colleagues who may be, um, you know, uh, people of, of color or people in some other minority. Um, but what I would say about the powerful pathways training is that essentially what it is, is it's a start. It's sort of um, a, a kind of training that, that surfaces some awareness that at least for me is now sort of part of what goes on in my brain around these issues. I would hope that, you know, there's a intermediate class that would be available to me at some time. And I would also hope that we might be able to find ways to offer that same kind of uh, interaction with the material for additional residents. Um, but it is a pretty emotionally intensive process. Um, so it's not something everybody's going to do. Grant Gibbon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Um, I had a question about the offsets. Um, I guess so. Yeah, offsets are, you know, typically the magic word for transferring money within the town. Um, so we received this money somewhere else. And um, can you tell me more about the sources? Uh, where the, or is there more than one source where these offsets come from? I noticed the guy, the water and sewer guy, talking about offsets, right? But I noticed the amount is a. Uh, uh, substantially um, higher this year. Annie, do you want me to answer that or do you? Well, let me 
start and then you can join in if I get it wrong. So Grant, what has happened is that the town has received a very large sum of money from uh, the American Rescue Plan, yeah. right? American Rescue Plan. And um, part of that large sum of money is being used to offset this additional position that will be with us for two and a half years. And that is this community outreach coordinator that Christine was talking about. You'll see those ARPA offsets elsewhere. We just saw them in the Health and Human Services budget. And I suspect we're gonna see them in other places. And some of that money is gonna to go to community groups. Some of it's going to small business grants uh, to support small businesses who've suffered during the pandemic pandemic. Some of it is going to social service agencies, like some of it, I believe, is going to the housing authority. Some's going to Food Link. Some may be going to um, Arlington Eats. So it's basically sort of think of it as dollars to repair the social fabric and hence um, its application to this position. Sure. I, I can appreciate the concept of it. I was thinking more about the amounts and the sources and, and how they're distri distributed. Right. Um, for instance, are all of those places you mentioned all within the health and human services budget or are they uh, in other budgets? As well? No, Grant, there's actually... Grant, if you look on the town's website, yeah, in the last uh, three weeks, the um, I think it, it's probably either the town manager's website or the board of uh, the select board, they uh, published the revised uh, ARPA distribution um, numbers and it's it's pretty complex there are four categories is, is town uh town town lost town revenues there's uh housing there's um you know in housing there's rent support and then there's uh other social social services so mm -hmm. and some of those and there's capital capital expenditures so it's a it's a lot to ask in one question here here. Okay, no, well, thanks. Actually, though, that was the answer for most of it. But I noticed the uh, substantial increase in the amount that we received, which, you know, it's a negative, but I understand the, the flow yeah. of it. And uh, I was just um, curious about that amount. And is that a sustainable amount? Uh, does it change year to year type of thing? I mean, it's a $100,000 difference. The, the town believe. received $34 million. Uh, and yeah. 10, $10 million goes into the municipal budgets without any question to be used by the town. It's essentially a, a mm -hmm. check. And then the, okay. the, re, the remaining 24 are allocated amongst these various um, mm -hmm. groupings and, and uh, can be spent over five years. So, um, and, and they will be audited by the federal state government. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Christine, as a follow-up to uh, the grant's question, can you tell us uh, in health and human service in total, how much ARPA money you received? That's a great question. Um, I'd have to add them all up and it's still happening. So we're still going to select board on mon next Monday to kind of finalize the ARPA plan. Um, I think I'd have to probably get that number to you maybe after to after tonight's meeting, Charlie, if that you, works. You have a you have an estimate. So it's a hundred for AYCC, uh, fifty four here. Um, the health department was what um, ninety. It's ninety two. Two ninety uh two twenty one. So yeah, probably about four hundred thousand um, across the divisions. Okay. Here, Thank just for this year. Does that does that help you, Grant? Actually, um, yes. That it sort of helps it helps me, but it leads to the other question. So, is this number going to change? It it could. I mean, the number here in this division, um, no. But I think across health and human services, as um, various programs are. Uh, put in place, it could, like if we were able to purchase an item, we may add that to the budget. Um, you know, I, I think every year there'll be new addition, there may be things coming in and coming out of the budget, but um, I think we, we have we have a couple of months of planning uh, to make decisions on what, what the, the final expenditures will be over the next three years. Thank you. Will it change the amount that we're voting on tonight? No. Okay, thank you. 
So uh, before you go to the next subject, I just have one question, Christine. Um, you know, having listened to Annie's description of the consulting program and also that we're planning to spend these funds on the town side, and, and your comment that, um, that the outcomes are not measurable, is this money the town should be spending if we don't know what the outcomes are going to be, how to measure them? I would say, uh, of course, I think it's incredibly important for us to be um, trying to move the needle. I wouldn't say that the measurements, I mean, that we can't measure or, um, you know, I, I think that um, maybe I'm not the best person to be explaining this at the moment, but um, no, I, I do think that these are these are programs that that are incredibly important for us to uh, participate in, particularly the the real training for town staff. I mean, we're looking at um, educating our, our staff on issues that um, that we face around equity and um, ways that we can improve the services we provide. And those those services that we provide, that the the changes that we make there, I think, are measurable. Um, you know, examples would be the, the terminology we're using um, in the forms that we put out to our pub, to the public. Um, you know, we can measure that that's stuff that we can measure, but but we we really need to look um, more globally at, at the work we're doing across our departments and making sure we're consistent. And so I, I do think it's important. I, I would stand behind it for sure. Thank you. Annie? Um, so I wanted to go on to the enterprise funds, unless there are additional questions on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Seeing none. Okay, so this is the enterprise fund for transportation. Um, and these are the, what do we get here? Yeah. So this is money going out and this is money coming in. And we are in balance. Uh, we have an increase in personnel services of $53,764. I think where we just- It's an offset. It's an offset. Yeah, it's I think this is just an offset. So again, we're putting the CDBG funding on the books. Does it make sense to everybody that the, the COA transportation fund has been supported by CDBG for a long time and that I don't believe we've ever shown it on the books before and now we're doing that. Uh, so that's this line. Um, so that increase is offset by an increase in CDBG funding. Um, and the transfer from retained earnings, that's just a transfer from a balance in the fund. And the transfer from the general fund is uh, slightly less than it has been in the past. And again, that's support from the general fund for um, COA transportation. Um, just a reminder based on Christine's uh, presentation that this is money that is spent helping um, folks who need the help uh, get transportation for essential activities like medical appointments and grocery shopping um, so that they can essentially stay in their homes and stay as independent as possible, as opposed to um, you know, having to go into some kind of care facility because they can't get around. Um, did I characterize that correctly, Christine? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does anybody? Do you have any questions about this, uh, Kaya? Just sorry, a quick question about how many um, about the you know ten thousand residents that would be able, eligible. How many are served? How many are served? Do you have any, uh, any ideas? Do we have yeah. that? So that? Uh, so okay. I, this year versus last year. I mean, during COVID, it was obviously a very different number. Um, I would say, and, and our senior center has been closed. So for medical appointments, um, I would say it's a, I want to say it's about a thousand uh, for medical. And that's, you know, whether it's Uber, cabs, um, 
for our vans. Um, and then I'd have to go back in the records to sort of look at what we have done historically for the senior center and for the other trips around town. But medical is really our big area. Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, any other questions from the committee on, uh, on this um, enterprise fund? So if I, if I can ask a question, look, mm -hmm. Annie, could you just slide the budget down a little bit, just one little bit, or make it a hair small or something? There we go. Okay. So the, um, the there's a big jump in salaries between 21 and 22, actual and budget. And that's also the year in which there is, from previous practice, apparently of not transferring from the general fund, we now transfer $50,000 a year into the general funds. And this was um, for the current operating year. So what, what is it that we changed here in the current operating year that we didn't need to have in the prior years? So we brought on a number of um, on-call uh, van drivers. Um, we had one van driver, um, in previous years, not, not anything on this sheet, but um, previous years we had one van driver. Um, when that van driver was sick, there were no van rides. So we changed things, we changed the way things were operating and we brought on on-call van drivers. Um, they're budgeted, they may be budgeted at that level at, you know, so we, we put in the budget 108, um, but we may not spend all of that if we don't have those number of rides. So um, for FY21, we may have budgeted the one, we may have been up to that 108, but then we ended up only spending the 76, 5, 569. So I don't know if that that answers your question, but, but um, the on-call van drivers is kind of like a placeholder that we use in order to, um, to make sure we have enough um, leverage within the budget. I, I was just trying to understand why um, we were able to, so you're, okay, so you're saying you have more van drivers available. Because mm -hmm. right? that seems so, like. Uh, we also okay. had, yep, and we also, don't forget, there were two years where we had COVID and the building was shut down. So the, the on-call van drivers, um, may have been budgeted at higher levels for those two years, but we didn't end up using them. We do okay. anticipate using them for this year. Once the building opens, people are now going to the medical appointments. So we are using the van on-call van driver um, pot more and obviously next year as well. So for the past two years, it was not utilized as much as um, we would have liked. Thank you. Do we know what the balance of the fund is at July? Uh, yeah. I think the balance of the fund would be on that same page in the budget message, which is 219. I have, I have it here if you want me to. Sure. 79,027. Thank you. Okay. And then I think this is the salaries. So this is the on-call van driver line that may not get spent. Any other questions? And then we're on to AYCC. I am gonna make this a little smaller guys so that we can see it all on one page. Okay, so we can see we have a big jump in salary. Um, I believe that What's happening here is that we have moved some what were on call or fee for service clinicians who were not um, salaried into salaried positions. I think we were required to do that by law, weren't we, Christine? We got kind of dinged by Correct. some employment yep. law violation. Um, 
And so that's the big change there. And then everything else here. Okay. So re uh, insurance reimbursements are up. Uh, transfer from other funds is slightly down from what we asked for last year. We are applying $100,000 in ARPA and we're using some balance of funds. So Christine, do you know the balance in the fund at this point? It is, we anticipate it going up, but it is 68,724 at the moment or at the start of the year, but we anticipate it going up a bit. Okay, so we're, we're spending it. Correct. Okay. And then these are the salaries and you'll see these, these are those mental health clinicians who have been put on salary rather than being paid by the hour because we got dinged. Shane, has a question? do you have a question? Uh, thank you. Uh, insurance reimbursement is that just commercial insurance? Is that Mass Health? You know, what type of play? Yeah, it's all of the insurances. It's um, public and private insurance. Thank you. Yep. And then you can see we have additional. ARPA offsets. Um, so um, any any other questions for Annie or Christine on this um, AYCC budget? So I, I have a, a question and uh, first of all, I have a, yeah, let me ask my question first then I have a comment to make. Um, so, Earlier this year, earlier early this um, season, let me call it that, um, Dr. Homan from the school department gave us a presentation and she remarked on the huge increase they are having in the school system with um, um, emotional and psychological issues amongst the students who have been going through you know, one to two years of remote learning and missing out on social interactions, et cetera, that are so critical to um, you know that young age group. Um, is the are Arlington Public Schools utilizing the AYCC to help mitigate those situations? Uh, of course, yes. And we actually have a contract with the schools. We see um, a number of students in the school during the day, the school day, um, and we provide sessions within the schools. Uh, so yes, and and obviously. Um, we work closely in all of the divisions of health and human services with the school. So AYCC wouldn't be any different. Um, not only do we have clinicians in the schools, but um, you know, I know that Colleen and um, the school staff are in, in regular contact. Um, we are seeing uh, you know, the hospitalizations of, of students in the various schools um, increase. We're seeing the intensity of the need increase. And you know, Dr. Homan's, um, you know, 100% correct in saying that, um, yeah, the need is, is, is huge right now. And, and obviously we're working closely with them to make sure we address that. Um, so. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so the other, I wanted to make a comment, which is that <clears throat> I, I, you gave your presentation earlier and you were mentioning that, uh, you know, when you joined in 2008, the AYCC was underwater. Um, my recollection is it was, so far underwater that uh, the town manager at the time was going to close it and um and i just think that that you've done a magnificent job in the last um 14 years i guess it is, what is it? uh 14 years um in in bringing this department to uh, and you know not only stability but growing it to provide services to the town I, I just think it's it's amazing considering the situation that we were in 14 years ago. So you you deserve that. Yeah. Uh, any other questions on on the AYC budget? Altasi. Oh, Altasi. Yeah. What 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 was the reason for making the fee for service clinicians into regular town employees again? So we. Um, we were made aware of a, uh, an employment law that we wanted to become in uh, compliance with. So we uh, had to convert our staff uh, or our clinicians, our FIFA service clinicians into um, staff in order to comply with that law. 
we, we did not receive an order letter. There was no order letter. It was just that we were made aware of the law, knowing that we would soon, uh, could soon become um, in compliance. Yeah, exactly. So we wanted to make sure we were in compliance with the law. That must have cost a great deal a of health insurance. So there were seven full-time positions approved. Um, that is not included in the, uh, um, in the budget here. Christine, is that uh, just, is that the IRS contractor versus employee distinction? Correct, yes. It really, you, know, you have to characterize the job and the IRS doesn't like it if you call an employee a contractor because of yep. benefits. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep. Does that answer your question? Okay, Makai has got a question. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering how much in health insurance that cost us. Um, how many of these people went on our health insurance? Uh, I mean, seven people, $15,000, that's over $100,000 in increased uh, health costs. So, so it is, but it's a lot of money. Assume, I would assume that'll show up in the health insurance budget. Annie, I'm sorry, Annie, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, I would assume that'll show up in the health insurance budget. Yeah. Makaya, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. Um, I think this is one of the most underutilized um, services, and I'm so, so thankful for these clinicians and for all that you do. Um, and in particular, I would be curious about like that comment about um, Arlington or AYCC being a model um, for other communities, um, because this is, you know, this is a crisis that like your department is addressing. And, and so I'm wondering if you could, um, explain a little bit about why this is so unique to, um, yeah, why this is so unique to other communities. Mm -hmm. So the only, the closest, um, agency to AYCC, um, through a town would be the Brookline Mental Health um, center. And that's still, that's its own separate nonprofit. The town of Brookline just um, gi gives money to that, to that agency. This is an actual agency of the town. Um, and there are no other um, fully licensed mental health clinics um, that are part of a community um, budget or a community, um, you know, local government. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is something that we are very lucky to have here and, and had this gone away in 08, never would have come back. Um, and at this time, we know that the, the need is just so great that um, we're very fortunate to have it here in town. Thank you, Makaya. Dean. Thank you. Um, did you I, I did, sorry, I was a little slow on muting. Um, so I don't really have a question as much as I have a comment. And since Christine, we have you here, I just want to say um, thanks for your last couple of years, sort of running the health department during a global pandemic that, you know, really was probably hell for your department. Um, you know, I was always amazed. I was always nervous, actually, because I saw all these health directors who kept quitting their jobs because they were like, yeah, I'm done, right? Um, and I used to always think about it, like, like how, how hard it is, not just to coordinate all the things, but then in some ways to be like the, 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 you know, the, the, I don't know what the word would be, the bad guy or the, the, the person who's going to make the tough decisions to close things or not allow people to go back into things or, or whatnot. And um, it's a really, it was a really hard, I'm assuming two years, but it was a, it was a critically important two years for the community. Um, I'm really glad it was you. I'm really glad you stuck with it. Um, I would say to the committee, like there were, I, you know, I just, Christine and I would have these brief interactions because I was, um, I'm on the board of the Arlington Soccer Club and I'm the, we have a COVID safety officer and it's me. So we spent a lot of, we spent like every now and then these interactions like about different things. And I remember just thinking to myself, like, I know how difficult it was for us in our small little world of Arlington Soccer Club. And then I thought about ex extrapolating that over the whole community and all the different groups, how like how much effort was going into it and, and, and whatnot. So I just want to say I really I really appreciate all your work. I really appreciate all the work of your team. Um, I, I mean, you know, we, we are, seem to be getting to the other side, which is 
awesome. And it's, you know, we, we it's no small part to all the effort, you know, you guys did to keep everyone safe. So thank you. Dean, obviously it's, uh, it was a team effort. Natasha's on the call. She wanted to see this presentation. She's the true director of public health um, and really a, a huge shout out to Natasha for her work and patience. And together, I think um, our team did a great job. So thank you, Dean. Are there any other comments on any of the budgets from the department health units? This department. Um, I just want to add one quick comment, Charlie, which is that I want to thank um, my colleague Wanda for uh, assisting me in the interview with Christine and sort of puzzling through all the questions we needed to ask. Um, I, I find that Wanda tends to ask the questions I don't think to ask. Um, and so I don't mean to, you know, steal all the thunder by being the person who does the presentation. I couldn't do this without her. So just wanted to get that well, in. Well, we, we, we know Wanda is one of the brains on this community, so on this yeah. committee. So it's a was... apropos comment. Okay, great. Um, okay. I, forgot, I forgot what it was, but when we were doing a training session, um, oh yeah, on, it was on the five-year plan. It mm -hmm. took about two seconds and found um, an inconsistency or an error or whatever. So I knew that we had to, had to watch out for her. Um, so if the, if the committee agrees, what I would like to ask um, is uh, that uh, you and Wanda make a motion, you or Wanda make a motion for all the budgets one at a time mm -hmm. with, the, with the numbers, including the uh, budget mm -hmm. with the uh, change that you mentioned earlier, Annie. Yes. And then... Um, We'll get a second and if there's see if there's any more discussion and then if there's not then we'll with the permission of the committee vote all the budgets at once except for the uh, enterprise funds we have to do those separately great so i think wanda that means you need to unmute and get ready to second me i'm ready <laughs> all right um so i uh, i move approval of the health and human services budget as printed it's a taxation total of Seven hundred and sixty thousand eight hundred and forty nine dollars. I second. Right. And then I move approval of the veterans services budget in the amount of three hundred and twenty seven thousand seven hundred and fifty three dollars. I second it. And I move approval of the Council on Aging budget. This is the one I've got to change. So the changes you need to make in your budget book are that the offsets are $96,115, and that makes a taxation total of $402,675. I second it. And... I move approval on the diversity, equity, and inclusion budget for a taxation total of $170,978. Second that. Okay, and then I gotta get to the enterprise funds. Can you just decide? No, let's, let's, uh, let's, do, let's just vote this first. Can you, can you confirm for me the, um, the first budget was $763,849? Um, yes, I can. Hang on, let me just scroll down. Yeah, seven sixty three eight forty nine. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, it's been moved and seconded on the the health budget, the veteran services budget, the council on aging budget, and the DEI budget. I note that the council on aging budget is different from the printed form, um, and it's a the bottom line is four hundred two thousand six hundred seventy five dollars. Is there any further? Um, discussion on any of those budgets, questions? So unless I hear an objection from the committee, um, I will take a, a roll call vote for all of those budgets in, in one vote. Hearing no objections, okay. Grant Gibbion? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Nikaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Arif Padaria. Abstain. 
Uh, Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Shailene Pokris is not here. Uh, Daryl Harmer. Yes. Annie LaCourt. Yes. Uh, Alan Jones. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. Um, the vote is seventeen in the affirmative, one abstention. Okay, so now to take the first uh, enterprise fund. Annie, can you flip that back up there, please? So that's the Council on Aging and Transportation, right? Andy, do you want to, you're muted. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, muted. Okay, there we go. I don't know why I did that. Um, yes, I, I move approval of the Council on Aging Transportation uh, budget in the amount of $194,644 uh, with a total revenue of $196,644. I second, second it. So I second. Is, thank you, Wanda. The second did so. Um, any further discussion? So we'll move for, to a vote. Grant Gibeon? Yes. Jane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Maya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Yeah. Arif Padaria? Abstain. Uh, Sophie McDazzle? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Um, Darren Farmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tassi? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Ian Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. So that's uh, 17 in the affirmative, one abstention. Um, and the next uh, enterprise fund is the AYCC. Yes. So this is the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. And again, I'm moving the expense total of $1,217,740 with revenue of $1,217,740. I second sure. it. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the AYCC Enterprise Fund? We move to a vote. Grant Gibeon? Yes. Jane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Abstain. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Uh, uh, Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Altasti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Um, Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. So um, it's uh, 17 in the affirmative, one abstention. Uh, the AYCC Enterprise Fund is, is uh, voted, supported. So, um, Andy, you wanted to discuss rodents. Um, yes, I merely wanted to suggest that we need to have a hearing on that particular warrant article. Tara, I don't remember what the warrant article number is, but it's the warrant article concerning rodenticide. And I believe the only thing we wanted to do other than to say that we need to do a hearing is to request that Christine uh, give us some kind of ballpark on what she think the, it, thinks it would cost to run the kind of public education program called for in that particular warrant article, because that looks to me, with your agreement, Christine, like it is the thing that would increase expenses should it pass. 
So do you feel like you're able to give us some kind of number? Not tonight. But yes, I can give you a number, but probably not right now. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, not, not off the top of your head. Yeah. <laughs> but see, to, you're yeah. invited. We have that here, and you're certainly invited to come. <laughs> Come, but I think if you just communicated by email, that would also be satisfactory. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Okay. Well, um, Christine and I guess Natasha, who's hiding in the yeah. background there, thank you very much for your time tonight and great uh, presentation and very informative um, answers to questions. So, um, so we're done with the. Um, Health and Human Services Department and NHS funds. Are there any other budgets that people have available tonight? Um, so I'm ready to go back to the Rec and Rink Enterprise funds. Okay. Go right ahead, Annie. Um, let me pull up my screen again. So we had two questions on these budgets. Ah, I need to do that. Here we go. Uh, I think I need to scroll up to get to rec. The rink budget, the question that we had on this, what, what was what was the transfer from other funds? And the answer that I got from Sandy was this, that the rink transfer from other funds is actually use of fund balance. So it's not a transfer from the general fund. It's just the, their, that use of, their, of, of a part of their fund balance. Um, I think what we were worried about was that it might be a use of uh, funds from the general fund budget, but it's not. Um, so I'd like to move this budget and have us vote on it. So uh, you're moving a standard, well, that's, I am moving one, right. uh, 100 and I'm moving $611,968 with an offsetting revenue of $611,968. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay, this is the Ed Burns Rink um, yeah. Fresh Fund, right? Yeah, and Alan Jones has his hand up. Alan. Uh, yeah, so Annie, that would just what you're saying is this would essentially be use of retained earnings yes it's any just other funds? Okay. in the in the chart of accounts i think it's just one of those things Edith's trying to change right some so, of the other funds call it use of retained earnings but right. it's just We're, inconsistent okay thank you would be the that would be the appropriate term and i think we'll get that straightened out this year i'll mention it to sandy okay thank you okay any other questions for annie or wanda on this uh, budget Okay, um, it's been moved and seconded. Um, and then no other questions, so we will go to a vote. Uh, Grant Gibbion? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Megliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? <laughs> yes. Uh, the, that vote on the uh, Ed Burns Enterprise Fund is unanimous. Thank you. And do you have another Enterprise Fund, Annie? Yes, the recreation fund. Um, so the question here was on the size of the uh, balance in the, the fund, which I believe we covered in our earlier discussion. It was Al Tosti's question and he is satisfied with the answer. I believe what happened is that there was both a the enterprise fund and a revolving fund and funds were moved between those funds. Um, but certainly if people have additional questions about what those fund balances and the flows have been, I'm happy to go get the answers, but I'm not sure that it affects this year's budget. So I would respectfully ask that we vote the budget tonight. And um, if people would like further follow up on how 
how the fund balance came to be what it was, I will happily go sit on Sandy's doorstep and get something more precise. Alan Jones, do you have your hand up or is that a... No, okay. Apologies, I keep forgetting to take it down, sorry. That's okay. okay. So any question for Annie or Wanda on uh, the recreation budget? Uh, a move motion is in order. So I move the uh, recreation enterprise fund budget for one million eight hundred and ninety one thousand seven hundred and twenty seven dollars with an offsetting revenue of one million eight hundred and ninety one thousand seven hundred and twenty seven dollars. I second? seconded. So it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. Grant Fabian? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Closer? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. So the vote on the uh, Recreation Enterprise Fund is unanimous. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Wanda. Uh, did you have any other budgets, Annie? Rwanda? No, I believe I'm done. Okay, thank you. Are there any other budgets anybody wants to uh, bring up tonight? Uh, we'll be looking forward to the park information, Brian, when it, when it's available. I don't know who's who you have. To I'll, call. Ch I'll check with the treasurer's uh, the the treasurer and see what she's. Um, is, she, is she also the parking clerk? Yes. Okay. Um, are there any? Is there any? Uh, old business that has not been addressed that anyone wants to bring up tonight. Yes, Sophie. Um, if you want, I, I had an answer for one of the Warren articles. Do you have any research on street trees? If you want me to quickly. Please do. How much time? Uh, this is, it was the temporary article 27. Um, and it's about street trees uh, being required part of a special permit. If, if you're seeking a special permit that this would now require that you put street trees in along the sidewalks. And uh, my further research indicates with Jenny that at maximum, they're talking about nine trees for the town a year based on past numbers. Uh, the trees would be paid for by those seeking a special permit for work on their property. So it's not the town that pays for it, but the town would presumably then have um, regular upkeep and treatment of the trees. Um, but we're just talking maximum, probably nine trees a year. So I don't know. Thank you. That closes that question. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Any other old business items that anyone wants to bring up? Okay. Um, we so, are Makaya. Charlie. Who, Makaya? Makaya has her hand up. Sorry, yeah. I, I have, um, Charlie, I don't know if you're able to see my um, email, but I'm pleased to report that there's been no changes to the reclassification document. Um, right. So the presentation is accurate as was presented, so. So we don't have to go back and revote. Correct. But we would have to, good. All right, that's great. Um, anything else? Um, I'd like to ask for new business. We can't do that unless it's on the on the agenda for the open meeting law. So, per the open meeting. So, I think a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. To adjourn. Second. Been moved and seconded. Um, I I'm gonna but say we we will adjourn unless there's a request to vote again. No request to vote again. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Talk to you all soon.